Oh, hey guys, it's uh, Dave Barnett from investlocalbook.com. Uh, I was just on the phone earlier today with a gentleman who uh, is exploring the idea of becoming a business broker and he found my blog site online and some of my videos about buying and selling businesses and he wanted to call me up and, and get some feedback about my experience uh, when I was a business broker from 2008 until 2011. And it brought up a lot of memories and I thought, you know what, uh, it's time for another uh, autobiographical installment um, for my blog site. Uh, basically, after the financial crisis of 2008 to 2009, um, it became very difficult in my finance brokerage business and I had to give that up. Over half the companies that I was using to source capital from went out of business during that crisis because they were packaging uh, finance deals together and selling them onto Wall Street and nobody wanted to buy that asset-backed commercial paper uh, as it was known at the time. So I had met several different people who were trying to buy businesses over that time, and I had run across a whole bunch of people trying to buy and sell businesses as brokers who had absolutely no idea what they were doing. And I was getting a lot of calls from these very people um, who were trying to help their clients obtain financing, again, not having any idea what they were doing. Not that I was an expert at the time, about how to buy and sell businesses, but I knew the money side of things uh, and the financing part. So I met a gentleman named Richard who owned a Sunbelt business brokers franchise and I talked with him at length and I basically decided that um, I was a smart guy. I knew the financial side of things. I knew financial statements. I knew about small business um, and that I could probably make a go of it as a business broker. And the reason why I chose to join up with Sunbelt was because they were a large international franchise chain and they had the resources to provide me with training. So I would actually have a training program with manuals and workbooks and there was an online program and their training led into the IBBA program where I eventually earned my certified business, intermediary, certified business intermediary designation. So I decided to start with them and basically in the fall of 2008, um, started to work with some clients. And one of my first clients was a guy who, a husband and wife team that had a, a building materials business. And I went through the process as it was taught to me and managed to sell that business and the closing date came in February. So it was like literally a five or six month deal and I brought home a nice big fat five figure paycheck. Um, and it was, you know, seemed like a great idea, it seemed like good money. So I started to devote myself fully to the business brokerage career and do reading and further training and, and then start on the path to my designation. In 2009, I decided that I would buy uh, the Moncton, New Brunswick office of Sunbelt Business Brokers. And by that time, there were a few associates that had joined the team. So I moved the business to a new office and we had um, there was myself, three other associates, as well as a front office uh, administration person. Um, and, you know, things were humming. The problem, though, with business brokerage is that there are two distinct sales cycles. The first sales cycle is convincing business sellers to list their business for sale with the brokerage. And there were some people over the course of, of the years that I was doing this that I spoke to over two years, over the course of two years, uh, before they finally signed on with me and listed their business for sale. So that was quite frustrating. And then the second sales cycle, of course, was selling the business. So one of the very first people that signed on with me was actually a fried chicken franchise restaurant. And that restaurant uh, was one of the last businesses I sold in December of 2011. So I think I had that listing file for almost three and a half years where I worked on the file and didn't make any money. Now, the big problem with business brokerage as a business model, as far as I am concerned in this day and age, is the fact that it is largely a contingency revenue model. So when people listed their business for sale with me, I would charge them an engagement fee, uh, which was money up front that demonstrated Number one, that they were serious about selling the business. And number two, it put some jingle in my pocket. It was a little bit of cash uh, for me to have uh, to pay the bills. Uh, there were several stretches 
when I owned the business brokerage where I went uh, nine or ten months without doing a, a single closing. So even though I sold over 35 companies while I owned, owned the brokerage, um, there were times where I would have like eight or nine months with no income coming through the door except an occasional engagement fee. And what, what that did for me personally was, was awful. Um, it meant that I couldn't really create a budget at home. It meant that I couldn't plan financially for things that were going to happen. When a deal did close and I brought in uh, one of those paychecks, it could have been thirty, forty, fifty, eighty thousand dollars, um, and all it would do is pay off the credit cards and the lines of credit, and then I would be afraid to spend money because I wasn't sure when the next paycheck was going to come through the door. So, by two thousand and eleven, um, I had arrived at a point where. That summer, I had six different deals that were set to close for the winter. And I was confident enough in the deals that were closing that I decided to take my family on a two-week vacation to Florida. So we went down to Florida. We went to Disney World and visited all those attractions. And um, when I got back, uh, basically over the course of the next eight weeks, three of those deals fell apart. So one of them failed to go through because it was a regulated industry and the government uh, bureaucracy that was in charge of licensing wouldn't issue a license to the buyer for whatever reason they had. So that was one deal that fell apart. Again, the buyer wanted to buy, the seller wanted to sell, the deal was in place, but a third party tipped over my apple cart basically. The second deal fell apart because a bank that had issued a finance letter rescinded it. So they changed their mind. They basically said, yeah, we told you we were giving you the money. Now we're not. And so, again, buyer and seller wanted to do a deal. The deal was in place. Deal fell apart because of a third party upsetting the apple cart. The third deal fell apart because of a franchisor. So the buyer and seller made the deal. They were both very happy about the deal. And then when the buyer started to have meetings with the franchisor, the franchisor was a jerk to the buyer. And, and the buyer told the seller, he said, look, man, I love your business. I love what, the, what you've done with it. I love the earnings. I love, I, I would love to be in this business, but I will not get into business with those guys. And so it was because of the franchisor that the third deal fell apart. Deals four, five, and six went through as per the plan. But instead of me ending up in December of 2011 with you know $100,000 of surplus funds in the bank, I basically ended up at the end of 2011 with my debts paid and a little bit of money in the bank. And it was around that time that my wife informed me that our marriage would be ending. So there was all this personal stress at home. Uh, there was the business stress of not being able to have a regular manageable cash flow. And I decided that that was the time to pull the plug. And I basically made a deal with one of my associates that they would take over the franchise and um, you know it wasn't like I sold the business and got a big lump of cash or anything I basically made a deal with him to sell the business and get a cut of all of the files that I had essentially opened uh, in the years that I owned the business and that was when I walked away from being a business broker and needed I, I knew that with uh, the changes coming in my personal life I was gonna have to get a regular job and uh, and have some sort of ability to plan my budget and things because you know two kids to feed and a wife that wanted out of the deal so anyway that is my story that's my life as a business broker and I'll tell you it was one of the most exciting periods of my life uh, because there's nothing more that I enjoy than trying to <clears throat> excuse me than trying to solve problems figure out a way to make things happen and in that role, you're basically constantly moving mountains and trying to work things out between the buyer and the seller. And uh, I loved it, but at the end of the day, it's just not an industry that I could make work for me in the way that, uh, that, that I needed to. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the story, and uh, we'll talk to you later. You made it to the end of the video. That's great why not come over to my blog site, investlocalbook.com, where you can see all of my latest posts and videos. 
You can also take the time to watch my welcome video, see what I'm all about, and if you wish, sign up for my email list. I only send out one email each week. You get to choose which topics you're interested in so that you only get information that you want to learn about, and it's easy to unsubscribe anytime. Click my free resources link and have access to all of my free ebooks, audiobooks, and other PDF downloads. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.